Hello and welcome guys. So I am going to make a playlist on plant disease prediction and this is the first video of the playlist. So in this video I am going to give you a quick overview of what we are going to perform and, uh, and in upcoming video I will write each and every line of code and also I will explain you everything why we are using these things. Before showing you what we are going to do here first let me give you a quick overview of the our data set. So this is a data set a lot of files are there in this data set. So this is a very big data set. That's why I have taken this data set and uh, this data set ha is having 87,000 RGB images of healthy and disease crop leaves, which is categorized into 38 different classes. So basically we have uh, 38 different types of crop leaves and these some are healthy and some are some are having some disease and this data set is divided into 80 to 20 ratio so 80 percent of the data set is in training set and 20 percent is divided as validation set and also we have uh, here 33 test images is created later for prediction purpose so once we create our deep learning model then at last for validation purpose for testing purpose we will use this 33 images which they have created for us to test our deep learning model okay so if you see the structure of the data set then here there's a training and validation there's two folder and inside training directory we have uh, 38 sub directories and inside these sub directories we have the images of uh, all the uh, things which we have here so if you see apple underscore healthy means that these are some healthy uh, apple leaves images and apple cedar apple rust these are some disease disease name of apple leaves so these are some apple disease black rot and apple scab these are some disease and blueberry healthy these are some healthy images of blueberry leaves so we have healthy images and we have unhealthy everything we have so basically we have 38 class and we have to make a deep learning model which is able to do a prediction on this 38 categories of images okay so that is our task so how we are going to achieve this so to achieve this what we are going to do here first we will import all the required libraries and then i will explain you how we can process our images using tensorflow so we will process that training set images and validation set images and then we will feed to our neural network. So in this part we will see how what architecture is needed to make a powerful deep learning model for this data set. As I have commented here when we are going to make this model and when we are going to uh, if you see here this is uh, architecture of our model which I have created and when I am going to perform model training by using this data set then we will encounter with some common problems like here I have uh, shown showed here that uh, problem of overshooting so what step we can take to avoid the problem of overshooting we will see some common problems while training our deep learning model like the problem of underfitting, the problem of overfitting and the problem of overshooting of the loss function or the problem of slow training process. These are some common problems when you are going to make any deep learning model then you will also face this common problem. So in this project we will also learn how we reduce these type of problems by taking some powerful steps. So in this project we will encounter with the problem of overshooting. So I have highlighted here overshooting because that problem is very severe and, and they, you have to do a lot of research to avoid those problem. That's why I have highlighted that because I also face this problem while building this model. So I have resolved those issues by taking some steps. That's why I have highlighted here these three steps which I have taken to avoid this problem of overshooting. So this is in general these three steps you can take to avoid the problem of overshooting of the loss function. So I will explain you in that way so that 
it's not valid on this uh, data set and on this problem only if, if you're going to make any project related to deep learning convolution neural network or anything anything related to neural network then you can use this concept there also to resolve your problem okay that's why playlist is very important for everyone so i recommend you that please watch this playlist from start to end so once our training is done then we will evaluate our model on training set and validation set so if you see here i'm getting accuracy of 97.81 percent and here validation accuracy i am getting 94.58 percent and then i will save this model in keras file format earlier if you have seen my fruits and vegetable recognition system playlist so there i am using h5 file to save our model here i am using keras file format so what is the difference between h5 file format and keras file format i will try to explain you by using tensorflow documentation so these things you will also learn here and at last i am going to record my history in json format so that if in future if you want to see training with respect to number of epochs what we have used here so you can see the history of our model because every time you can't train this entire thing so i am saving those histories in json file format so that you can use in future if you need also at last we will do the visualization of accuracy so here this is a beautiful visualization so we will learn how how we can do training and validation accuracy visualization but this is not enough only accuracy metrics is not enough to evaluate your model so we will also do model evaluation on some other metrics i am using my same validation set data basically in this part i am going to make a, i am going to compute a precision recall for each classes don't worry i will explain you everything why we are doing these things so at the end we will compute this precision recall f f score and support for each classes of our data set so these are 38 classes for each classes i am computing precision recall and f score and support by seeing this we are uh, we confirm that now our model is good because only sometimes i have seen that accuracy of the model is good but precision or recall is less then also that model is not good these things also must be good enough so here if you see for each classes i am getting precision almost close to 95% and recall is also very good so now this model is good as we have computed here confusion matrix also so we will do a confusion matrix visualization using seaborn library of python so this is a beautiful visualization of confusion matrix if you see here predicted class and actual class and these are some diagonal element and diagonal elements are showing that majority of images which models predicting and actually it is belong to that class so we are interested on in only in this diagonal element if the diagonal value is good and off diagonal element is less then our model is good so here if you see this heat map represent that only the bright part is this one so this shows that our model is good because majority of values lies here this values if you see if i zoom in these things and if you see here 4.2 into n to the power 2 means that almost 420 images 420 images are of class 0 so this is a confusion matrix visualization so this visualization shows that how much percent models predicting that it's belong to class 0 and actually it's class 0 so almost 420 images are in the validation set model saying that it belongs to class 0 and actually it is from class 0 and six images model saying that it belongs to class 1 but it's actually from class 0 and for one image it's saying that it belongs to class 2 but it's actually from class 0 so by doing this confusion matrix visualization you can see the percentage of uh, prediction which model is doing and actually what is that so these things you can identify by using this confusion matrix so if you see this entire project here you are learning a lot of things like you are learning convolution neural network and how you can avoid the problems basic problem involved in the convolution neural network 
and also you are learning some evaluation matrix like here by using accuracy of the model and also by using precision recall f score how you can compute these things and what is the significance of confusion matrix these things you are learning in this project after this this is our train plant disease dot uh, ipynb file this is one file so once you complete this you will get this two file which i have saved here the strain plant disease dot keras and this json here we i have stored all the history of the, our model okay and this is a test file so in this i am going to do a prediction on the test images which i have got from here if you see this 33 test images we have in the data set so we will do a prediction on this 33 test images first we will store all the class name in this class name variable so this step i have done just to find out the class name and then i will load our model which i have saved in the strain plant disease dot ipynb file so i will load my save model from here by using this thing i will i will write each and everything and i will show you how we are doing this i will also implement everything by using the documentation so that if you stuck somewhere then you can refer to the documentation that will be easy to make you because simply just copying from here is not good if you are following the documentation parallelly then it will be good learning experience for you all then i am using cv2 for doing visualization of this test images and then i am doing a lot of things here i am doing some pre processing and at last i am doing here prediction that it's a cedar apple rust disease okay if you see this image name that this image name consists of apple cedar rust dot jpg and we are also getting here the disease name as apple cedar apple rust so this this actually belongs to some of the classes if you see here this class apple cedar this uh, model is saying that it belongs to this 0 1 2 this third class okay the model saying that it belongs to third class and actually it it is having some apple cedar rust disease and our model is also predicting that it is having apple cedar uh, this cedar apple rust disease so model is predicting good and once we move to the testing part then we will test on some other images also so this is what we are going to perform in the upcoming videos so if uh, things completed then uh, i will make a small web app which will perform a plant disease prediction so this is all about this video we will meet in next video and in next video i will start building this project so i will write each and every line of code and i i will explain you everything so stay tuned and this is a very good project so if you are going for an interview related to machine learning or data science then you can show this project there and you can explain the all the concept involved here every time interviewer is expecting some basic things so by using this project you can explain the basic concept involved in any deep learning project so this is a very good things to get you started so that's all for this video we'll meet in next video thank you guys thanks a lot for watching this video